Hello, I'm Deborah Holt, and this program is called Living It Up, because we want to lift you up, we want to build you up, and we want your life to be looking up and ready for His coming. So I have some guests with me today, and I'm excited for you to hear their story. I'm excited to hear some of it, because I haven't even heard a lot of their story yet. So we're going to get right into it. With me today, I have Cindy and Ray Spellbrink, and they have a, a variety, really, of kinds of ministries. Um, we're going to start with a couple of them, uh, the New Jerusalem Singers. They are musical, and they share their faith through music. And they also have another unique ministry with Ray here, which I think is so interesting, Ray. I just love this. You even got the beard for it. Ray does Santa Claus. Oh, you got the tummy for it, too. Okay. Well, that's good. You don't have to stuff anything, you know. You can just uh, relax. Well, it's perfect. And uh, what a ministry. I can imagine that's lots of fun. Mm -hmm. Well, Cindy, since you're closest to me, I'm going to start with you. And I want you to tell me a little bit about, um, you know, everything you do is pretty much faith-based. And everything you do, you let your light shine. And that light is the light of the world, Jesus. And so let's start with you and tell me a little bit about how did you come to know the Lord? Well, I was raised in a Christian home. My grandfather and my dad are preachers. Um, they were down around southern Illinois. Um, and so I came to know the Lord when I was about seven years old. I gave my heart to the Lord. And so, of course, I was raised in it, so I knew all about it. But So you just heard about it in church? In or? church, <clears throat> right. Okay. And okay. so then, ever, ever since then, I've served the Lord. And That's awesome. Now, if somebody out there was sitting in their living room, and they're wondering, well, oh, what do you mean, you know, living for the Lord? What would you tell them the difference is in your life since you know the Lord? What does it's, he do for you? It's something to be changed. You know, you know that uh, the things that you used to do, you don't do anymore. You know, I didn't really have a lot of that, except for a little few times whenever I went out um, when I was a teenager. You know how you have rebellion. Yeah. Um, but then you know that you aren't supposed to do that stuff. And it's yeah. just living your life differently than anybody else. And, show, and showing and telling Jesus, that's the main thing. Showing his love. Boy, that's it's right. all about the love, isn't it? Right. The love is what draws them. I don't know anybody that gets excited and gets saved um, without seeing some love mm -hmm. in right. people. And that love of God is what draws people to the Lord. Of course, we know the fear of the Lord. We are to have the fear of the Lord. And I think some people come to the Lord out of the fear of the Lord, um, and we are to fear him and we are to reverence him. And that's very real. I am I'm very, very aware of the fear of the Lord. But it's a healthy fear like you fear your parents when you're a small child and your mom or your dad says, hey, straighten up. And you have this fear like I need to change. I need to stop that. It's that kind of fear and holy reverence uh, of the Lord. And, of course, he is God of the universe, so uh, he, we need to fear him because he's, he's in control of everything and the matter of eternal life it resides in him. So there is a healthy fear of the Lord, isn't yeah, there? And there a lot is. of people get saved because of the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So it is wise to fear the Lord, and we just... Have a choice, you know, God good, devil bad, God, Jesus in your heart, go to heaven, not know Jesus, do not know him, do not have him, do not go to heaven. You go somewhere else and it's it's not pretty, folks. I'm not going to go into that, but you don't want to go there. That's right. Um, so, Ray, let's talk to you a little bit. Um, you're, you do both. You uh, are a part of the New Jerusalem Singers. Correct. And you play an instrument? I do. I play bass with guitar. How long have you been playing bass guitar? I, I started playing out of necessity. Our bass player left uh -huh. uh, back uh, shortly after we started, and and I I had been trying to play regular guitar, electric guitar, and somebody told me you pick up a bass, anybody can play a bass. They said you can be an idiot and play bass guitar, <laughs> so I figure I qualify. 
And I've been playing bass since mm, about 19, late 1989. 1989. Well, I love music. So yes. anybody who plays an instrument, I have the utmost respect because I sing, but I never learned to play an instrument. Mm. So uh, that always made me kind of sad that I didn't get that opportunity. We didn't. I wanted to play piano, but we didn't have a piano in the home. We lived way out in the country, and my parents just really couldn't afford, you know, the lessons mm -hmm. and stuff. And with five kids, they were doing good just to <clears throat> get us clothed and all that. So um, I never learned to play an instrument. So I love it when I hear that people can <laughs> play an instrument. So and I, I very seldom play with a band, but I I've had only a few opportunities. I always used CDs, I, mm -hmm. you know. And, but anyway, enough about me. <laughs> well, so you guys really enjoy the singing and the music and everything. How busy do you keep traveling around? And and what is it like when you go to a a, a place of ministry where you guys are ministering? What is it like? Describe the service for me. Well, it, it just depends upon the setting. If we go into a church or we go into a nursing home, we go into a high rise, we go to a gospel sing, it really doesn't matter in that respect because our whole purpose is to lift up Jesus Amen. through the music. Anything else is, uh, you know, we get off track. Mm -hmm. So, and, and as long as we lift up Jesus, we're going to have a good time. We're going to yeah, have fun. That is I, so I, true. I believe it's fun being saved. It is. And we have a good time. We and we celebrate Him, and and just to see the people get involved in it, especially when you see seniors. We sing a lot of the old songs, and that bring back memories. A lot of these songs are no longer sang in churches today. And you'll see tears wiping, you know, just streaming down their faces. And you'll see their hands being lifted in praise and worship to God. And, and just a smile on their face. That, that's worth it all. Yeah, it is. Knowing it really you're, is. that God's using you to touch somebody's heart. It is. It's worth it. If one soul, if you go and if you spend five hours in getting there and practicing mm -hmm. and singing and, and you get one person who makes eternity in heaven. Wow. Right. You know. One of the models we like to do from time to time is, our, it's in a big E, but it's encourage, exhort, and edify. Mm -hmm. And that's, if we do all three of those, anytime we're out and about to anybody, we've, we've done good. I love it. Yeah. The three E's. I've heard mm -hmm. that scripture, you know, all prophecy is to comfort, edify, and exhort, but the E's are easy to remember. Yes. Uh -huh. So I yes. like that. I'll have to steal that if I can. <laughs> you can. By all means. <laughs> So you uh, really enjoy what you do now. Cindy, uh, tell us your role in all that in the New Jerusalem Singers. Talk I to am the manager. Um, when we started back in 1989, uh, we needed a name for our group. And so we came up with, you know, we threw out a lot of different ones. But one of the guys that was a founding member, he had said, how about the New Jerusalem Singers? And so from there it stuck. And so um, that's basically we just have started scheduling from then. And we did a lot of nursing homes at that time because we were just trying to get mm -hmm. started. And Boy, and they need it the most. I mean, my grandmother's right. forgotten. 94 and she's in a nursing home. And, oh, if anybody needs that encouragement and edification, it's, right. it's the elderly. Because my grandmother tells me all the time, I just get so lonely. Right. And I go a lot, and I got a sister and a mom and another sister that go a lot. But it's like, you know, she would really like somebody with her all the time. She mm -hmm. gets right. pretty lonely. She's still able to get up and around and go to the dining hall and well, that's good. stuff. But, you know, she dismisses her family. Sure. So, so now my role basically is to try to get bookings every year. Okay. And so about how many bookings did you do last year, do you know? Last year we did close to 90. That's quite We big. had about five That's cancellations because of rain, because of outdoor events, weather and, and the weather, and floods around some of the areas. So we weren't able to go. So we would have had 95 places yeah. if we wouldn't have had 90. the cancellation. 90 is a lot. 90 is a I lot. Mean, I've done some singing where you go to different events and sing, and man, 90 is quite a bit. So especially, you know, if you have other things you're involved in, you know. Yep. So now I understand that recently you agreed to take a church. Actually, we went back to a church I retired from uh, back crazy. in 2013, I believe it was. I felt the Lord just leading us out. And into another, I don't believe you ever quit ministry no. or you ever retire from no. ministry, but the, we've just gone a different direction mm -hmm. with ministry. Mm -hmm. And we were focusing more on our singing. 
and uh, the Lord led us out of the pastorate, and he said it wasn't a retirement. I mean, it wasn't a re resignation, it was a retirement. Mm -hmm. So I was excited about the future, and then they had some problems last October, and they called us. They said, can you come and fill in? And so we was filling in, and uh, kept filling in, and kept filling in. Mm -hmm. And then we gave them some names. I had some commitments uh, in, in December that I couldn't be at the church. So we gave them some names of some other ministers. We helped them put out uh, to uh, accept resumes. Put out. I even run an ad for them in, in the ministry site for them to receive resumes for the job. And then the Lord laid on my heart to, to um, uh, maybe he wants me back there. And I almost felt like Jonah, you know, God leading me back, but I didn't really want to go back Yeah. because uh, we were very content, very happy doing mm -hmm. what we were doing. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then I started having, you know, kind of like you, vocal issues oh. with, with, with uh, singing. And I said, well, maybe this is a way for God to bring us back to keeping us in ministry. And so we, uh, I, I held on to my resume for three weeks and, and until I, the Holy Spirit just spoke to my heart one Sunday morning, today's the day, very plainly. So I, I turned it in reluctantly on my, on my part. But, uh, you know, I also know it's, it's best to obey God. That's true. So, uh, so I did that, and then they, uh, they went through their process. They got it narrowed down to two, and then I was one of the two. Then they interviewed me, and uh, then the pulpit committee unanimously recommended that I That's return awesome. to the church. So, so we're a package deal when we go. I preach, yeah. she teaches. So. That's great. That's great. And we still go out and sing. That's oh, yes. Awesome. We haven't given that up. <laughs> well, and you do a thing called Cowboy Church. We do. Tell we me do. what that is. Tell me yeah, that. Um, several years ago, this would have been back in 07 maybe, we, Springfield, where the town where we lived in at the time, uh, they had, one of the churches there had what they called a cowboy church. And so we, we was curious, we went, and went for several several times, and eventually I, I uh, was sharing time playing bass with another older, much older man who was looking for somebody to replace him because he said it was just too much for him. And eventually I replaced him, and then Cindy played keyboard for Cowboy Church, and we just loved it. And then so when we, uh, when we, the fir when we back in 08, when I was first uh, at the church we're at now, uh, within two weeks of my being uh, uh, voted in, we had our first Cowboy Church. They had never heard of it there. And we do things a little different than most Cowboy Churches do. I, I didn't know that, but we do. We, uh, our church musicians make up the core of our cowboy church. We, Cindy plays piano, I play bass at church, and then we have uh, two guitar players. And then anybody else, we invite anybody else to come in who plays. We don't practice anything we go over that night. We just let the Holy Spirit put it together. And it works. It works for us. Isn't it something how when we relax and we just kind of lay back and flow with things, that the Holy Spirit can actually flow through us more. Right. Then if we if we have our agenda and everything is boxed in, it has to be a certain way, we don't really leave room then for the Holy Spirit to kind of right. touch our heart and maybe share a story like, oh, I just remembered a story and I think I'm supposed to share this. And because the Holy Spirit's real sure. and the Holy Spirit speaks to us. He will prompt us to share a certain story that maybe on like this program for example he might prompt me to share a certain story and it might be just the story that someone sitting in their kitchen is had just prayed and asked God an answer to a question and this story tell this story tell the answer to that question so if we leave God a little room and we don't schedule him in to a T what we're going to say it then opens the opportunity for God to just That's have right. His way and flow. I love that. I got to come to Cowboy Church. You'll need to come. Yes. Now, do you do the cowboy hats and everything? We do. We oh, I cowboy love hats, cowboy jeans, hat. bolo ties. We do it all up. And then one of the unique things we do, we have what I call a word from our sponsor. That's a brief word from that. the word. It's amazing what you can say in about three minutes. I love it. And the offering, we, when we do receive the offering, they pass the cowboy hats. We pass the hat, <laughs> literally. And, uh, and everybody just seems to really, really enjoy it and have a good time when we, when we gather together. Now, when you do this, a word from our sponsor, are you talking about Jesus being the sponsor? And God. is it a, a word from the scripture? Exactly. 
or something exactly. God showed you or right yeah that right. is awesome so, that is just awesome so. well I I just think that is so curious and um, I love it when the Holy Spirit gives us creative ways mm -hmm. to open our homes or our, our churches or our business meetings or our lives to something new that opens a door for others who maybe wouldn't just fit in the typical box, you know. Right. They wouldn't go to a church because they've been hurt. Maybe they went to church and all somebody did was rip them for what they were doing wrong in their life. Mm -hmm. And um, so there are people who won't even go back to church um, because they were torn or drugged to the altar and, mm -hmm. you know, forced to say some words that they really didn't even mean. And, um, you know, I've actually seen that happen. You know, a woman drags somebody <laughs> down to the altar and make them get down there. Wow. And um, it was a teen, you know, a teenager. Mm -hmm. And she pretty much didn't want anything to do with it after that. It yeah. was pretty much, boop, the door was slammed shut for many years. And later in life, she did open her heart's door to the gospel. We, but, we, we have... We have grown the church through Cowboy Church because, and we still we have a good awesome. number of people that come who don't go to church anywhere. Yes. So any seed we can plant, you know, any seed that God can water through us uh, yeah, is, is a positive great. thing. I love it. you got to come. We've got you on the calendar, don't we? I think not yet. Okay. Well, we are definitely <laughs> doing that. We've got to do that. I was going to come Sunday night. My husband was out of town, and I started this, you know, uh, rundown thing, no energy and all that. So I just would think I was fighting something off, but I, I defeated it. In the so name that, of Jesus. Yes, we have the victory, don't we? That's right. By his stripes, we are healed. So I just kept claiming that, and here we sit. Amen. Here. That's right. We made it. Well, I think that is so awesome. Now, have you had people who actually weren't, Born again believers that that saw the Cowboy Church and attended, and and from that uh, they actually opened up their heart and received Christ and were born again, and their lives are changed. They, they haven't seen a told change. me about it, but we've seen people who have been extremely hurt in church, and uh, but they've come back, and God has softened their hearts. And they're and, still coming. And they're still coming. So still you coming. know they've had a change. Right. They're still yes. coming. Right. That's a good sign. And, and the music, you know, God can, as you said earlier, God can use anything. That is and, so true. Uh, and the music really mm -hmm. is a draw. That because, is awesome. uh, because we And we have a who. We have a ball doing that. That and, and the people so in the neat. congregation just love it. And then we have food afterwards. Because anything, anytime we get together and sing, have church, we almost always have to have food. Well, I think, you know, Jesus broke bread. That's you know, right. He broke bread with the disciples. And even with people who came to hear him, he fed the 5,000. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, I can't picture feeding 5,000. It, it was it was had to be just sheer miraculous. And had leftovers. And had 12, <laughs> yeah, 12 baskets of leftovers. Yeah, it, you know, it's just amazing. I picture how in the world would they have done that. It had to be just sheer miraculous, yes. you know. Absolutely. But he definitely is alive and well and does the miraculous in our lives. So, well, I grew up with a lot of country music in my life because my dad and my brothers, <coughs> excuse me, played at a country opry. So when I heard your story about the Cowboy Church, it really interested me because they uh, went uh, from a gospel quartet and then a trio, and then they went on board with uh, a group that did a variety of different kinds of music. But um, my dad would sometimes sing a gospel song. He, he would sing songs that were always loving and mm -hmm. about love and sometimes about family. He did this song called The Roots of My Raisin Run Deep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was about how the roots that he was taught growing up ran deep, and those roots were going to stay there. And so... He was raised, uh, my grandparents, my dad's parents, stayed in the same little church for 47 years. Wow. And uh, he was in the same little area, little town. And, um, you know, he was raised uh, by parents who, they were pastoring a church. And so he was there every Sunday, every Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. He was there every time the doors were open, whether they wanted to be or not. <laughs> but, you know, the Bible says if you train up a child in the way they should go when they're old, 
they will not depart from it. That's right. You know, we, we like you talked about, sometimes when we're teenagers, we kind of waffle a little bit, you know, maybe. You might have some some straying going on at some point in your life, but but when they're old, they will not forget about it. They will be drawn back. I believe that if you have somebody in your family, and maybe there's somebody out there that you're praying, and you're praying for a lost loved one, um, we disagree with you today. We just thank God, Father, for the prodigals coming home. Yes. And I just decree and declare in the name of Jesus today that your prodigals come home. Your prodigals return. And we just thank you, God, that you are well able. You know exactly. His arm is not shortened that he cannot reach out. Right. And he knows exactly how to whet their appetite. You know, I heard a story once about how in the Jewish community, you know, Jesus was Jewish. He grew up Jewish. And so he did a lot of the Jewish traditions and everything. But I heard that the Jewish would uh, put a little oil on the roof of the baby's mouth and the baby would be you know, pushing that, trying to get that oil off, and then that would help them to latch on when they needed to feed. And um, <clears throat> I just think of the Lord. He knows how to whet their appetite to get them to hunger and thirst better than we can. And the, the best thing we can do if we have a loved one who isn't serving the Lord, the best thing we can do is just whet their appetite with seeing the joy of the Lord in our hearts. Because the joy of the Lord is what will bring them. You know, preaching at them will not bring them. Uh, you know, dragging them, like I said, to church against their will will not. Um, especially once they're older teens. Now, your children need to be brought up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And they need to be taken to church whether they like it or not. But there comes an age of accountability where when they're over 18 and then you don't need to preach at them. You just need to love them. And just let the Holy Spirit flow through you with the love of God. And that love is what will draw them back to the Father. Or draw them to the Father the first time. If they've never accepted His love. And so God knows how to draw them. And I just, I just agree with you that you can trust God. That you can, mm -hmm. you can put your teens in their in his hands but Amen. now um you that where you do your ministry is it's on the other side of springfield illinois correct it's about 30 miles north of um, of springfield north of petersburg actually about five miles north of petersburg in a little bitty town called atterbury atterbury you have to be going there to get their little old country church oh uh, that's awesome atterbury i like it kind of reminds me of that word you know hey attaboy attaboy yes yeah, yeah, attaboy <laughs> Out of boy and out of berry, you know. <laughs> I like that, you know. Well, I grew up in a town that was only a hundred, a little bitty town between Champaign Urbana and Decatur, and there was only a hundred people. It was called Mill Mine. I heard that at one time there was a mill and a mine, so <laughs> thus came the well, name Mill it. Mine. Yeah. So that's where I grew up um, from fifth grade till I graduated high school. And it was just really different. Growing up in a little bitty town is really different. But I loved it because it's close community. Everybody mm -hmm. kind of watches out for each other. And everybody knows each other. And so um, usually there's a warm and friendly attitude amongst the people in small towns. Not always, but usually. So I really like small town living um, myself. But um, well, what, did, what would you say... Um, is something that maybe there's somebody out there and um, what word would God give you today of encouragement to them about regarding any area of their life, just whatever the Holy Spirit speaks to you, what area would you like to address just to, to look in the camera and maybe give someone that word of encouragement? Okay. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, God's still there. God has promised. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And based on his word, and I believe we can stand on his word, he never has and he never will. And we need to just, when things are falling apart, look up. When things aren't going the way you think they should, look to him. But he's got the answers, and he's got it all under control. Amen. That is such a good word. <clears throat> because in our times we're in, there's dark times. There you are. Know, we're, we're facing diff difficult times in this day and age. And even just turn on the TV, you see things that are scary, long? you know. Right. 
things that are scary and there's a lot of things happening in this world that we don't understand or that we never thought we would see in our day. But, you know, <coughs> the Lord is able, no matter what, to give you a way out. And after this, let's say, you know, you're elderly and maybe you are failing in your health, but, and you are facing eternity, all you have to do is just trust in Christ and ask Him in, and then you're ready to face eternity. And so my pastor used to say, well, you can have an awesome life living for the Lord. It's like an amusement park and a roller coaster living for the <laughs> Lord. Right. You can have an awesome time here on earth living for the Lord. And then after this, it's super world. And I just, and he says, and it's better than Disney World. And I just right. love that because, yeah. you know, it is better than Disney World. I've been to Disney World. There's some, <laughs> hot, some hot weather and some long lines, you know. But heaven, heaven, my dad used to say, he's, he's already in heaven, but he used to say, and especially in the last five years of his life, he had health issues. He used to say, well, honey, heaven's looking better all the time. That's right. And it is. Yeah. It's looking better all it the is. time if we look around us. How about you, Cindy? Take a few minutes or a minute, even in just a minute. What would you say, maybe, uh, what would you say out to the to the women out there, a word of encouragement or some, is there something that you feel on your heart you'd like to say, period? Um, Ray pretty much said a lot of it. You know, if whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, you have to always remember God is there. Sometimes when nobody seems to be there, nobody seems to be present at all, God is there. And you can always call on him and he'll, he'll listen to you. Sometimes the answer may not be what we want, but it's the answer. If we get an answer, it's the answer that God wants us to have. And we have to rely on God for everything that we go through, everything that we face. And that's what we do a lot of, you know, is, is rely on God completely. Amen. That is so true. That is so true. Well, your prayer could be as simple as this. You know, when a man and woman get married, they don't say a lot. They just say a couple little vows and then they say, I do. And you may feel like, you know, it's complicated or hard to turn your life over to Christ, but it's really not. Mm -hmm. And um, just like they just say a few words, I do, and Christ does, he comes in. So I'm just going to pray with you right now. Father, we just ask that you come into our life. Come into my life, Jesus. I accept what you did for my plan of salvation for my missing the mark. That word in the Bible, sin, means missing the mark. Mm -hmm. Maybe you were a great person, a good person, but there is none perfect and you have missed the mark. Well, Father, we thank you that you gave a promise that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So we call out to you, Jesus, come in. Jesus, infiltrate our life. Take yes. over our life. Take our heart over. Clean it up. Make it willing. I accept your righteousness in place of any attempt of my own. Yes. And we love you, Jesus, and we trust you from this day forward. Amen. 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 Well, there'll be information at the bottom of the screen. If you'd like to have these folks come to your event or come to your church or come to something that you're having or need a Santa Claus, <laughs> that won't. It, it, time goes by so fast, we're moving into <laughs> spring. Before you know it, it's going to be that season yeah, that's again. Right. But if you need uh, the services that, that Ray and Cindy offer with the New Jerusalem Singers, with the Santa Claus presentation that he does, or ministry that he does. Or if, uh, if you need to talk to me, maybe you want to know more about this walk with Christ and, and turning your life over to Christ. My number will be at the bottom of the screen also. And uh, we just bless you. Tonight um, at the ministry building, the address will be on the screen at the bottom. Uh, live streams indicator. We have ladies night out and it's a night of the arts and there's all kinds of booths of people selling uh, and showing things creative things in the arts and so just come and fellowship it's free free night out for you ladies we love you god bless you and we look forward to being with you again and this is deborah holt and we'll see you again living it up on up tv god bless you